Do you remember the first time when you started marketing your retail store, the excitement that you had about putting a campaign together and how you hoped that this marketing strategy would lead to more customers and hopefully better sales? And then all of a sudden, you find a few weeks later, your marketing's not working, a little bit of doubt creeps in, you're trying to figure out if it was worth the investment. You end up being super, super frustrated because you're wondering why your marketing message is not producing a return on investment. And then from there, you're just like, fuck it, you give it all up. So welcome to this week's video, one of uh, the videos this week. And we're going to be talking about creating a bricks and mortar marketing strategy for your retail business. In this video, I'm going to run you through some key steps on how you can do that for your retail business and hopefully put together a proper marketing strategy for your retail business. If this is your first time here, please make sure you smash that subscribe button, watch all the way till the end. And uh, yeah, leave me a comment. I'd love to know uh, what are the strategies that you're using for marketing your bricks and mortar retail business. So one of the um, one of the major mistakes that we make as retailers is, um, you know, we many of us don't really have a clear and concise marketing strategy. And even some of us, a major mistake that we make as bricks and mortar retailers is we actually don't invest enough money in marketing or we either focus too much on online marketing and not enough on uh, offline marketing. And some of us don't even target the right audience. And one of the major things that really goofs us up is basically we're not tracking and measuring our results. And when we don't track and measure our results, we anecdotally, anecdotally make the mistake or make the assumption that the marketing campaign didn't work. And so what we then do is we tend to run to another strategy. We need to quit. We end up quitting the strategy. And basically, uh, we we basically give up in our marketing strategy. And fair enough, because, you know, it hasn't really worked for us. And that's super annoying. And as a consequence of giving up, we are obviously not being able to increase sales and generate enough leads to produce the sales. You know, we haven't really communicated or um, engaged our target audience on what we're trying to sell. As a result, we've got no brand awareness. And really, we are not really establishing ourselves in our local community or within our target market about the products and services that we that we have, that we sell. And basically, we're not making the most of our marketing dollars. So we're actually losing money, which is super, super annoying for all of us. So what, what I want to run through is a, um, a couple of ways that we can go about marketing our bricks and mortar retail business for success. And yeah, these are some tactics that you can employ pretty much straight away. And these will, these will, um, these will help you immensely to bring more customers through the door, increase sales, increase profits. Okay. So the first strategy um, that I, that I, that is often discounted, which I want to run through is to the traditional marketing approach. So I guess in the digital age, it's very easy for us to dismiss the traditional marketing approach. And when I say traditional marketing, you know, using things like print advertising, newspaper, if you have a local newspaper and magazine ads, and if you have the ability, and if, you know, perhaps some of us in regional areas, we have the opportunity to go on radio and television. The big mistake that we make here as retailers is we often get sold into these programs of going to the newspaper or the, the radio station or the TV. And the mistake that we make is we're not really sure on our target market. So it's really important that we have our target market really, really mapped out so that we, when we, when it comes to creating this uh, traditional advertising or going down the traditional advertising route, route, it is super effective. And these methods are still effective because in the digital age, we're so used to receiving everything digitally, obviously, but, you know, imagine... And a lot of retailers are having success with the old school paper, postcard. You can do direct mail. Also, similarly, outdoor advertising strategies at the bus stop, at the train stop, et cetera, billboards and that kind of thing. So they are still effective. But the key principle there is to understand your target market. The next thing 
is we need to obviously be on social media. So the, the first part of being on social media is it surprises me how many of us retailers have not got our Google profile all sorted. So that's just the basic one that we all need to have, ensuring that we have our opening hours, which are 100% accurate. We've optimized for Google Maps. We've done all that behind the scenes. We've got our business verified with Google. Really important because so many people use mobile search and using mobile search to call our stores directly is such a big thing. And if you're not, if you have not set that up, you're just basically missing out on sales and missing out on opportunities. So once we have Google set up, then it's going back to understanding where our target potential customers are in the in the area. Where do they hang out? And so this is back to that target market piece. So we need to have an understanding of you know what pa- platforms they are using, whether it is Instagram, TikTok. LinkedIn, Facebook, of course, wherever they are, that's where we need to be. And the biggest mistake that we make here as uh, retailers is I think we, well, I know is one, we don't, we get overwhelmed very, very quickly with a social media plan. It can get very, very confusing. And rightly so, there is so much to the social media beast that is constantly evolving. And of course, we're getting pitched by so many other social media managers. So it's really important to ensure that we have a strategy in place and whatever strategy that we choose, we want to make sure that we can commit to it and be consistent with it. And the key here is to not overcomplicate it. I think we need to keep it super simple so that initially ourselves can execute it and then uh, moving forward, we can make sure that we can get a team member of ours to execute our social media posting because we don't want to be doing that all the time. So social media is very, very important this day and age, just in case you had your head in the sand uh, and try not to, and we're trying to, I guess, bypass, bypass that. Some of the social media strategies that work really, really well, apart from posting is you can start to run contests, giveaways, you, eventually, you can start to work with influencers and local bloggers in your area to help promote your business. But step one will be to figure out and post regularly on the social media platforms without being overwhelmed. The next uh, strategy, a part of the traditional, is public relations. So you, you remember when the back in the good old days, this used to be such a big piece for many local business owners. And as times have moved on, many of us have forgotten about it. But when I mean public relations, it's really great to get involved in the local community. There are so many community groups that could need your help in terms of raising funds, in terms of doing work around the area. And you can go so much as sort of educating them on some of the products and services that you offer if they are part of your target market. Public relations also involves being a thought leader within the retail space in your community and you know getting uh, getting involved in the no- get getting somebody to write up an article on you is so gold and one of these public relations strategies you just need to continue to do them and have them as part of your ongoing marketing mix and these over time can produce some great results so it's an often forgotten strategy that we as retail business owners don't use anymore And I think that's really because we're so caught up in the day-to-day running of our business. But once you're starting to move ahead and starting to grow your business, this is one marketing strategy that is so important for bricks and mortar retail businesses. In-store. So in-store is the next one. And it just amazes me how many retailers forget about this because our in-store marketing uh, experience that we create is all part of Retailing 101, right? So when I say in-store marketing, we want to make sure that our signage is all Mickey Mouse, our signage within our store, our store windows. Many of us can be using our store windows and in-store signage to help promote the products and services that we have within the interior of our business and our businesses. Not only that, you want to make sure ticketing's right, lighting's right, Obviously, some of us have TVs in store. We want to make sure that they're playing the right promotions. And simple things that we can do in store to promote our business is you can give out flyers, you can give out coupons at the register. If you have unique samples, 
that's also a great idea to do. And all of these things just create a little bit of a buzz and is an excellent bricks and mortar marketing strategy that's going to help your retail business stand out from all the other retail businesses out there. And believe me, a lot of retail businesses, for whatever reason, we tend to rest on our laurels and we basically do the bare minimum. And that's simply because we're so busy running around trying to put out fires in our retail business. But it, now it's time to get organized and to um, to start really thinking about the ways that we can market our retail business. The final strategy that I want to talk about is to host in-store events. These have become a really, really good way to build loyalty within our store. It's a fantastic way to communicate with your target audience. And once you know your target audience, you can start to build a whole heap of events out of this and basically drag them into store, give them a really good reason to come back into store. And we, a lot of retailers who pull this off really, really well. They know that it works with an amalgamation or I should say a partnership with your suppliers and product suppliers and other people all around the retail business that you are working within to hold these in-store events. And I think the biggest mistake that retailers make here is we may do one or two events. It may not be a success because there is a little bit of work but you need to continue with hosting these in-store events, perhaps after hours or in-store, but you need to continue after each event. You need to track, measure, get an understanding of what went wrong, what went right. I th the biggest mistake that retailers make here is that we kind of stop doing these after a little while, but it's so important that we continue to do this to get momentum. You will see some of the big retailers do this really, really well. Once you start the in-store execution of these events aimed at your target audiences, you will naturally build a more loyal crowd and a more loyal following. And eventually your sales will start to increase from doing uh, all of these uh, in-store events, these basically these initiatives. So there you have it. They were some of the strategies that uh, we are using to um to market our bricks and mortar retail businesses. Uh, if you've made it this far, really appreciate it. If you could smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. And of course, I would love to know also what are the bricks and mortar, uh, what are the strategies, marketing strategies that you are using in your bricks and mortar retail store to grow your business. And again, as always, if you're hanging out with me for the first time, I would love to see you over in our Facebook group. We run a Facebook group for retail business owners. It's a great place to network and learn strategies on how to grow your business. I'll put the, the link to the Facebook group down the bottom and I look forward to seeing you there. Until next time, ciao.